Well, hello there guys and welcome back to another requested video here on the channel. Now this one comes as a video request by Alex Libby, as you can see here. I'm sorry if I'm you know pronouncing your name wrong as always because I can ha have a tendency to do that. But this person actually uh, suggested this about one month ago. And first of all, I just want to give a, a brief little apology as I have been working on uh, a few other projects, mainly uh, the PowerBook G4 project and a few other things like that on the channel. So I haven't really found time to do this, but I just recently took a look at this comment the other day and I just kind of thought, yeah, this would be a pretty interesting idea. As I kind of said here, this would be a very interesting concept uh, to you know take a look at. But what he's essentially asking me to do is take a look at Windows ME in 2015 and seeing if we can get this 15 or 16 year old operating system maybe even 17 year old no i i, I think it no windows 98 came out in uh, 1998 i think it's a uh, 15 yeah fi at least 15 year old uh operating system to function or like perform you know the core basic functions uh that people want an operating system to perform today and you know that uh, includes things as he said uh like browsing the web playing games things like that that you know average computer users would do today and i thought that well this would be kind of interesting to, to you know take a look at it might not be successful because you know this is 15 or 16 years old but i figured that it'd be worth uh, the idea anyway or, or you know worth the try anyway and that's what we're going to be doing in this video now this may end up being um a two-part or three-part video but i'm going to try to focus on the majority of things here in this first part right here so i have uh, drawn up uh, a brief little list here of things that we might want uh, a you know average computer to do today um so you know things like uh, you, you know browsing the web doing things with email uh, doing you know some basic productivity stuff uh, managing files, listening to media, um, getting uh, you, you know like your uh, core PC protection uh, with a, you know antivirus and things like that, and uh, maintaining the actual computer with uh, things like CCleaner and things like that. Now he also said uh, doing games, but I'm not really sure of many games that would work on Windows ME. But we're gonna obviously be finding that out. Uh, later on in the video, I will be taking a look at games, but I, I I just couldn't really think of many games that would work on Windows ME. Of course, I'm probably wrong. I'm sure there's many games that work perfectly fine, or you know, modern games. I know older games would work, you know, just like they used to. But um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're going to be getting started. Uh, I'm just kind of kind of you know go down this list here, uh, and we're going to be taking a look at you know the the things that you know, people would want to do on an average computer today. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do before we even take a look uh, at the list of all the tasks that we're going to be seeing if Windows ME can do, uh, is we're going to be uh, installing something called Kernel X. And what Kernel X is, is essentially um, an open source uh, compatibility layer for uh, Windows 9X based operating systems. And what, is, like, what it allows you to do essentially is run newer versions of certain programs on Windows ME and it essentially allows for uh, like better compatibility with Windows XP only and even some Windows Vista only programs. Now this is um, open source and it's third party, it's not developed by Microsoft but it is something that we can definitely use to um, you know make Windows ME function a lot better than it normally would. So I'm going to be downloading that right now. As you can see, I was uh, trying uh, to download Opera in the um, you know previous take, and I just kind of realized that this thing you know kind of exists and how it's you know kind of going to be helpful. So uh, we're going to download uh, Kernel X. If I can spell it right. It's Kernel X. Kernel E X. And we're going to go to the SourceForge page. Now, last time this didn't load. Yeah, see it aborts the operation. Um, sometimes it can take a few tries, but it is uh, hosted uh, on SourceForge. We're going to download it. It should allow us to download it. Hopefully it doesn't give us an error because this is Internet Explorer 5, which um, doesn't really work very well, as you can see. All right, we'll download it from... Let's try and do it. There we go. All right, so we're going to save program to disk. Run right on the desktop. Download complete. All right, so we're going to close out of that. We're going to run uh, this installer. Welcome to the Kernel X uh, Setup Wizard. We'll click Next. Now this is uh, completely open source under the uh, GNU General uh, under the GNU General Public License. So meaning that you could, if you wanted to, you know, say 
add on to this and you know make it better than it is which is uh, definitely nice because it is open source um myself if unicode is required something we install for continuing uh yes we will continue it should automatically download it i guess um let's say yes it's going to install all of that we're going to enable kernel x extensions for all applications and we're going to reboot so like i said what this is going to allow us to do is essentially um have like just basically increase the amount of programs that can work with Windows ME, which is going to help us as we go down this list and take a look at all the all, like all these different programs and tasks that we want Windows ME to do. Um, but yeah, this was uh, you know kind of convenient that, that this program happened to uh, exist, I guess you could say, uh, for Windows ME because I think it is going to help us a lot. Um, I was already trying, as I said uh, in that previous take, uh, to install Opera, and it wasn't working. And the latest version of Opera was a pretty old version that can, you know, run on Windows ME. And this is going to allow us to get maybe even, you know, like a different web browser, like a newer version of Firefox or Chrome. But um, we're just going to see what you know, or, or just kind of you know, play it by ear as we go on. So we, uh, so so as we boot up, we see this uh, uh, little dialog box. It says kernel X has been successfully installed. Is now enabled for all applications. To make newer applications run or fix old applications, you may need to go to the kernel X tab in the properties of the application executable or shortcut. So we are we we have now essentially patched the kernel to um have that uh i'm just gonna move these two files to the recycle bin okay so after we have kernel x installed i was trying to get um you know opera to work and i think this video is gonna be made up of like a lot of takes because i'm having a you know i'm like trying to find the best method of you know trying to figure all this out and it does take some time um but i think i found the reason why these two uh opera installers weren't working so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to copy this link I have in my uh, host web browser here. We're going to go to IE and we're going to paste this link I have uh, to the Kernel X wiki. And this is uh, a specific wiki for Opera. Now, I think that Opera, I, I don't know if I've already said this, um, but I think Opera is the best web browser to use on such an old operating system like this as it is very stable. It's also very lightweight and it's, um, you know, obviously a modern web browser. And I think that opera um the like the latest version of opera is like 20 something or even 30 and we can get opera 11 on here now with firefox the current version of firefox that i have is let me just show you right here uh firefox 40.0.3 on my host computer now the latest version of firefox we can get with kernel x is eight without it it's like three so um that's you know a pretty big jump 8 to 40 is kind of a big jump uh, in you know version numbers but with opera you know we can get I, I think before kernel x it was like 9 you know opera 9 and the latest version is you know like let's just say 25 maybe it is 30 but we can get opera 11 but i, I think opera is going to be the best for our means here so we're going to uh it says that the latest version is opera 11.0 to 11.6.4 it mentions opera 12 but we're not going to be trying that because it does not I think they were having a few issues with it. Um, so we're just going to get the old MSI based installer, which is the reason why that these weren't working because these were not the .MSIs. So we're just going to delete those, and the .MSI is what we need to actually get this, you know, working. And this is still on uh, Opera's FTP server, as you can see here. So we're going to download this to the desktop. And this looks like it's going to take a little longer uh, than I expected, but that's good because it is 12 megabytes. And and yeah, that is a good sign because uh, these previous uh, two installers were very low in their file size, which meant that they would download things from the internet as they were installing, which I don't believe um, Windows Me you know supports completely. So you know, it, it just tells us right here what you have to do to you know get it working. It says to set it to or to set the uh, compatibility mode. Of opera.exe to windows 2000 sp4 or it's gonna uh, or otherwise it's gonna say that it's missing uh, a you know critical dll file so um this is opera 11.0.0 and what we're gonna be doing with this is i think because after it, we get opera installed everything else will just kind of fall into place or at least i'm hoping it will um 
we are going to have to download a few more programs. I'm thinking we're going to be trying either an old version of Microsoft Office uh, for the productivity. Maybe we'll use uh, Google Docs and see if that works. We're going to be trying to get uTorrent. We're going to be trying to get VLC, uh, ClamWin for the antivirus, and CCleaner, and a few games. You know, as uh, Alex actually suggested uh, in his, you know, comment. But um, so I'm, I'm just going to pause the video and wait for this file to download, and we'll move on with taking a look at the web stuff. All right. So the download has finished. We're going to actually just open the file and. Yeah, this is uh, based on the old Windows installer, and apparently it says Opera 10.6, and then it says Opera 11.0 up here, so I'm kind of confused as to what we're actually going to get, but um, yeah, I don't think that it's 10.6, uh, it says Opera 11, 11, and it just still says 10.6, so I'm guessing that's something that Opera forgot to change. Um, so yeah, we're going to do all this, we are going to have it uh, as the default browser, we're going to accept the license agreement, and we're going to have it install. Um, so let's just, uh, yeah, let's just let it, uh, you know, finish up installing here. Fail to load a library. I think that is Unicode compatibility layer because one of the files is in that cannot be found. Okay. Right. Now that is what it was saying to, so we have to go in here. We have to change kernel X compatibility to Windows 2000. There we go. All right, yes, we want to set it as, as the uh, default browser, and here we go. We are in speed dial, which is uh, Opera's you know main page, and everything's looking pretty good. So we have Opera installed, the uh, latest version of Opera working with kernel X, so that is very nice. We have it down here in the taskbar as well. Um, it's just getting some tabs here, I guess, to put in the, the speed dial. So yeah that is definitely pretty nice we're just going to try to start browsing the web i guess we'll go to google it shows what it's downloading over here it shows that the page is uh you know secure and yeah um you know like the whole opera interface kind of uh, reminds me of chrome and firefox kind of at the same time um which is definitely nice um because I, I i do like both of those browsers so yeah, you know, let's just go to YouTube and see if it actually, I don't think, I, I highly doubt it's going to actually play videos, but let's see if we actually just go to my YouTube channel here. We'll see if it actually plays video. I don't think it's going to, but I'll be very surprised if it does. You can see the text is kind of different. I'm guessing that's uh, something to do with the way that uh, it's obviously like, you know, displaying it. And it does load the web pages kind of slowly, but uh, definitely better than Inter uh, Internet Explorer 5 is for sure. Oh, you need to install uh, Macromedia Flash Player. So version 11, March 2012. Okay, it's not that recent, but we'll just go with that. How do we, let's see, use the same instructions in 10.1. All right, archived Flash Player versions. Copy this. All right, we'll open with, actually, well, we have to get uh, either WinRAR or we'll just save it. I think that actually uh, in uh, Windows Me, you can um, like you, like open up zip archives. So we're going to have this download. It opens up uh, a new downloads window, which shows what it's downloading, which is nice. And yeah, we may try other browsers, but I, I think Opera is going to be the main one for now. And this is, as I, if you can go into about, help about. Yeah, Opera 11, Win32. See, it says that it thinks it's running on Windows 2000, but it's not. It's actually running on uh, Windows ME, which is not based on the NT kernel at all. So this thing, uh, this you know, like this whole kernel X thing actually works. And you see we have copyright 2010 is the latest version. So about five years old, which I guess wouldn't be that recent. But I guess you could still sort of browse, you know, the modern web. Like we can do things like say, like let's just go to my website here as it's downloading. So we're gonna go to my website. We'll see how long it takes us to load. Actually seem to load uh, perfectly fine. It's even doing the thing where uh, it will only scroll, uh, you know, like the actual content rather than the whole background, which is very nice. Um, it shows the ads down here, shows all the text properly. Um, we can go into videos. Okay, so it has, you know, finished telling that. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But, you know, let's try to go to videos, for example. Well, that works. So the background is kind of messed up, as you can see in the back there. Um, 
but it does load it, which is very nice. It's trying to load uh, the elements here, but I don't think it's working. <laughs> Alright, so we're downloading uh, WinRAR beta. We'll save that to the, uh, to the documents folder. I was finally able to find one that actually worked. Like, because these web pages are kind of giving me a bit of uh, problems. So, yeah, I, I guess Opera wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but hey, you know, it's still better than uh, Internet Explorer 5. So, let's just try to run this here. I think that this should, uh, without even us having to tweak any of the uh, compat compatibility settings, it should work on Windows ME perfectly fine. So, yeah, we'll say done. If we refresh, we should be able to open with. And we have um, a bunch of file folders. Oh, I guess we want, let's see, 32 bits. We have, why do we have tar.gz files? 32 bit. Wait, these are Linux. What? We don't want Linux. <laughs> what is this? Oh, release and content debugger. Okay, where's the ones that are just like the plain Flash player? Gee, this may make this so confusing. All right, we'll get 10.1. Save. <laughs> All right, so we now have um, uh, WinRAR downloaded uh, and you know completely installed. And now we're gonna take a look at seeing if we can get Flash Player on here. So I got uh, this you know Archive FP 10.1, which is for Flash Player. We're going to go and see if we can actually install this. Hopefully, we will. Um, I don't know which one. Let's say read me. All right, let's just try to install this and see what happens. <laughs> All right, this program will install Adobe Flash Player 10.1. I've read install. We have to close Opera, which we closed Opera. Let's just extract this in case we have to restart it. Oh, there we go, installing. Look at that. All right, installation completed. So, um, that should give us the ability to watch YouTube videos. We'll open Opera here. So, we should be able to go to, say, YouTube. It just already pulled up my, uh, what is a GPU video. And look at that. It is working. And, well, there we go. It is working. It's, you know, like, obviously buffering, but I think that's just, uh, the internet connection right now. Um, I'm trying to turn it into theater mode, but it's not really, not, not really working for some reason. But yes, it does GPU memory and it GPU does work, as you can arm. see. Um, now, yeah, it is using uh, the... Oh, there, it just went into... Okay, there we go. So yeah, we are um, in the theater mode here. It is a bit laggy, but, you know, at some points it's not. Uh, so yeah, you, you can definitely still watch YouTube videos on here. It is going to be a bit laggy. I'm sure it's going to be the way most things are on this but yeah if you really wanted to watch a youtube video you could definitely do that i don't see any, any problem uh especially using uh, opera 11 here so that is very nice we're streaming this currently in 480p let's try to go up to 720 here i just have a you know the volume turned a little bit down but yeah, it is it, it is working. So we can ch uh, probably check off uh, YouTube videos. I think we have it's here. So you know we can obviously browse the web. Uh, that's checked off. We can watch YouTube, checked off. And social media is the next thing. Can we actually use social media um, with this browser? So let's just head over to Twitter here, and we'll also open up Facebook. You know, two of the most popular social media websites. Uh, let's say we want to go to my Twitter page. Say we want to go here to my Twitter page. You know, can it load? It looks like it can. Um, obviously, it has to you know load uh, the title image with the you know basic stuff like the tweets and the you know basic profile stuff is loading, which is nice. Um, Facebook is, we'll, we'll, we'll go to Facebook, my Facebook page here. Alright, so we have uh, the Facebook page here, it, it is loaded up, as you can see. Um, everything seems to be working okay. It is a little bit laggy uh, with the actual, you know, scrolling, but all the content is here and it does work. So could we actually use this? Um, well, let's just try to log into Twitter here. Okay, so the web page is being kind of weird, as you can see here. I'm trying to compose a new tweet, so... 
we'll try to tweet out hello you can see some of the symbols are all off but it does <laughs> it does actually send the tweet I think yeah right there so um, I don't know what's going on with the web page <laughs> but it's being kind of strange <laughs> as you can see um, so yeah maybe social media is not gonna work as well as I thought I think that this web browser is a little too old for that um, but essentially for just basic browsing the web you can definitely do that you know maybe watching YouTube videos but as you can see here it's just not liking uh, Facebook and Twitter so I'm probably gonna put an X for that alright guys well I guess that is gonna be uh, wrapping it up for the first little part and I guess this is going to be a new whole mini series on the channel as I don't really want to make these videos too long as I always say you know when the video gets over around 20 minutes I kind of just, just like to cut it here because it can be a, you know a bit too long and I don't, I don't really think the majority of you guys would watch an hour long video of this so this is going to be cut up into I think more uh, than two sections I think we're going to be taking a look at this like over the course of you know a long period of time as I don't think I'm, I'm going to be focusing on just this uh, one particular video I'm probably going to be focusing on like other things too so um, this, th this is something that I guess if you guys like, uh, be sure to let me know because I'm probably not going to be doing this if you guys don't, you know, like it. Um, so, you know, just uh, by either leaving me a comment uh, or clicking on that like button usually just, you know, kind of lets me know that, that you guys like that. So be sure uh, to do that if you uh, enjoyed the video and if you want to see more videos like this. And next time we're probably going to take a look at, uh, you know, email and getting into uh, some of the, the productivity stuff. So, yeah, I guess that is uh, going to wrap it up for today. I'd just like to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.